Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. This is the biggest cover-up since Watergate, a story no one wants to talk about. He didn't protect your sons so he could protect his presidency and the wannabe future presidency of his then Secretary of State. He didn't protect your sons, choosing instead to protect the feelings of those in the Muslim world. This week, Ben Rhodes' White House email is the Benghazi smoking gun. Susan Rice was prepped to say the so-called protests were rooted in an Internet video so as not to show a broader failure of policy. Now, we've impeached a president for lying about sex with an intern. A president has resigned in the face of certain impeachment for covering up a burglary. Why wouldn't we impeach this president for not protecting and defending Americans in the bloodbath known as Benghazi? Fact, an ambassador is sent to an insecure facility that doesn't comply with minimum standards in a designated danger zone. The CIA warns of numerous al-Qaeda training camps in Benghazi. Our ambassador sends repeated emails and emergency cables for more security. Fact, it was the anniversary of 9-11. Whistleblower Greg Hicks calls Washington to advise that Ambassador Stevens said that he and the Benghazi consulate were under attack. General Carter Ham tells Washington that our consulate is under siege and our ambassador may be a hostage. Fact, everyone in Washington knew what was going on based on the drones, the satellites, the audio, the real-time phone calls. They attacked with heavy artillery and rocket-propelled grenades. Fact, it was a tight presidential race. Barack Obama campaigning as a war hero, a real commander-in-chief, claiming al-Qaeda was on its heels. But Obama loses all credibility if the nation thinks al-Qaeda destroyed our consulate and has killed four Americans, including our ambassador. So the conspiracy about a grotesque video begins. Former CIA Director Mike Morell removes the word Islamist in describing the extremists. He takes out references to the previous CIA warnings of an al-Qaeda attack. Fact, the Joint Chiefs and Defense Secretaries say troops couldn't get there in time to save our men on the ground. There was not enough time, given the speed of the attack, for armed military assets to respond. The fiction begins. It wasn't al-Qaeda. It was an anti-Muslim American-made video. Before our eyes, the terrorists become the victims, and the American victims become Irrelevant. The president repeats the fiction on The View, on David Letterman, at the U.N. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. You even take an ad out to apologize to the Muslim world. Since our founding, the United States has been a nation that respects all faiths. We reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. But there is absolutely no justification to this type of senseless violence. None. In fact, to add insult to injury, you condemn anyone who says something negative about Islam. Mr. President, it's not about them, it's about us. You represent us. You're supposed to protect us. And instead of condemning the terrorist, you criticize free speech. I don't even think you believe in the First Amendment. And you're certainly not a man of your word. There should be no doubt that we will be relentless in tracking down the killers and bringing them to justice. Really? May 2014, and you still haven't brought anyone to justice. And the absurdity of your claim that spontaneous demonstrators actually brought rocket-propelled grenades to protest a video is belied by your own words yesterday. The notion that this is some spontaneous uprising in eastern Ukraine uh, is belied by all the evidence of well-organized, trained, armed militias 
with the capacity to shoot down helicopters. Generally, uh, local protesters uh, don't possess that capacity of surface air missiles or uh, whatever weapons were used to shoot down helicopters. Wow. Here we are 20 months later, and it takes a judge's order to force the release of emails that the president wouldn't produce to an equal branch of government there specifically to check and balance the president's office. And tonight, in an exclusive justice interview, we find out that even those documents may have been tampered with. It appears that the conspiracy was so vast, the intent to obstruct the truth so uniform, that documents were withheld. The cover-up is classic. And the sad part is no one, including you, Mr. President, will tell us if you issued the cross-border authority to protect and defend Americans. Mr. President, it's called an abrogation of duty. You have not taken your oath to honestly and faithfully execute the duties of your office. As Commander-in-Chief, you have not protected us. This dereliction of duty as Commander-in-Chief demands your impeachment. Your cover-up was for political advantage. The promotion thereafter of virtually everyone involved in your conspiracy and the stonewalling of Congress, the denying of access to key witnesses, all add up to a classic cover-up. And what's that? You were elected? There is no contract with someone who thinks that the American people are nothing more than pawns in an all-consuming power play to change who we are as a nation. You swore to protect and defend the American people, but instead you left Americans to die, not lifting a finger to help them. Mr. President, none of us want to believe that our president would let Americans die, but the arrogance, the failure to act, the lies, the cover-up, make it clear that you, Mr. President, have defrauded the American people. You, Mr. President, have violated your constitutional oath. You have not faithfully executed your duties in the office of the president.